Am I wrong for asking that my husband not share pictures of us? Friday night, my husband, 28 male, and I, 26 female, went to a nice dinner hosted by my husband's company. The dinner was mainly to celebrate the great year he and his team had, so he was basically the center of attention. I purchased a new white dress for the night. When I put it on before we left, my husband told me that the dress was practically see-through and left nothing to the imagination. I looked in the mirror and he seemed to be exaggerating, so I told him that it wasn't nearly as noticeable as he was making it out to be. You could sort of see the outlines of my bra, but everyone wears underwear, and unless someone was deliberately looking, it wasn't an issue. We went back and forth for a bit. I didn't have any other dresses that fit me, as I recently gained a bit of weight and haven't had a need to dress formal. He said he'd rather me dress more casual than wear that. After a bit of back and forth, he gave in and I wore it. We went to the dinner. I got to meet a lot of his coworkers and bosses. It was lovely. Afterwards, he wanted to make a post on social media about the night and asked me to choose which pictures to include. I saw the pictures of me and my jaw dropped. The flash on the camera and lighting in general made my outfit way more revealing than it looked in the mirror at home. You can see every roll, every freckle. It leaves almost nothing to the imagination. I was completely embarrassed and told my husband not to post them. He told me that he has no pictures of him without me, so there's not really much he could post from the night. I asked him to photoshop my outfit a bit to make the dress less revealing and he said that he doesn't know how to do that. After an argument, I won and he agreed not to make the post, but he said he still wants to send some to his parents directly. And I'm sorry, but none of them look flattering. They make me almost look naked. He said since his coworkers and bosses saw me like that, he should at least be able to show his parents as well. I feel like since my husband agreed that the dress was too revealing, he should be understanding that I don't want him sharing pictures of it with the family. His coworkers and bosses are one thing. I never have to see them again, but family is family. He thinks that I'm not being fair. In his words, I insisted on wearing the dress and now I'm preventing his family from seeing pictures because of it. It's now Sunday morning and he's still not giving in. I want to just forget about the whole thing and move on. He seems to really want to share pictures of the night. I'm not sure what to do, whether I should give up and tell him to send it anyway to put it behind us or whether I should stand up for myself. So I might be asshole for asking him not to share pictures of us. I feel like because the event was about him, you should have listened to his opinion and didn't throw a fit. And if he didn't like the outfit, you should have just listened and gave in because you cared about him and wanted him to look nice for the night. Okay, question for the group chat. Am I the arsehole for not making my sister-in-law a bridesmaid? So me and my sister-in-law have never clicked. This is despite me trying over and over again to build our relationship. But things went downhill when she started randomly blocking me on social media. But now me and my fiance are planning our wedding. Congratulations, girl. I have decided that I do not want her as a bridesmaid. I don't bloody blame you. My fiance is fully supporting my decision, but now my mother-in-law is sending him patronizing text messages. Am I wrong? Girl, I personally do not think you are wrong at all. It's your wedding. You can do what you want. And those bridesmaid spots are precious. I think it would be good to know why she's blocking you though, because clearly there's something going on there. And I also get why the mum wants her to be involved in the wedding as well. But again, your wedding, your rules. Like, does the mother-in-law even know the full truth? But no, baby, you are not the arsehole. So I wanted to start this little thing where you guys can send in your questions for the group chat. I've been doing it on my Instagram stories for a while. And I thought I'd bring it over to my besties on TikTok. So basically, you can either comment your question or if you want to remain anonymous, you can message me with sort of this setup. So you need to put um, Q, T, F. GC. So questions to the group chat at the start and then that's how I'll know it's for this. Sometimes we just need that girl advice, do you know what I mean? You can literally do anything, like the one the girl has sent in, like a real life situation or just a general question. Some of the ones I've done on my Instagram so far are how long is a long term relationship, like six months, two years, five years. Another one was you're going away for seven days, how many pairs of pants are you taking? Just all the questions that you want an answer to but you don't want to ask. So ask your questions to the group chat in the comments or feel free to message me. Would I be the asshole if I don't change my son's name even though it may cause him to lose an inheritance? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. I, 24, got pregnant while I was taking a gap year traveling. I met an older guy. Nothing gross. I was 19, he was 23. We had fun. I was working in a bar to make money while I explored his city. Get it, girl? Whole life or no life, guys. Whole life or no life. When I got pregnant, he lost interest really quickly. I understand, but I am pro-choice. And I chose not to terminate. I went home and had my son. I also made sure to get child support. He could afford it. He did fight it, though. I had to prove paternity and everything. I think that's valid. If you want child support, you gotta prove that kid is yours. You gotta prove it. That's valid. Through that, his parents found out. They are well off. They have met my son, and they truly do seem to love him. They have provided gifts for his birthday and Christmas. They helped me with extra money so I could complete my university without going into debt. They have taken us on vacation with them so they could spend more time with him. 
they are my biggest fan but we are cordial to each other i feel like that alone is enough like you're an asshole just change your last name dude you're gonna end up costing your son like a better future because you want him to have your last name three months ago my son's father passed away he got drunk at his bachelor party tripped on the sidewalk and hit his head my son and i attended the funeral we spent a week in that city so his grandparents could see him they approached me with an offer they have no other children or grandchildren their son was only 28 so he had lots of time to provide them legitimate kids they did not say this i'm just assuming you know what they say about assuming it makes an ass out of you and me so they never thought about my son's name. They said that if I changed his surname to theirs legally, they would make him their primary heir. I think this is dumb. He is their only grandchild, and they would deny him an inheritance because of his last name. If you think it's dumb, why not just do it? Like, they've already shown you they're willing to be in your kid's life. I said I would consider it to be polite and have left it at that. I actually have a pretty good life as it is. My family has been very supportive, and because of the whole court thing, my son's father had to have life insurance with him as the beneficiary. Would it be nice for my kid to get a big sum of money? Yes. Do I want him to have the surname of a man who didn't want him, see him, or love him? No. I have been talking to my family about it, and a few of them think I'm being an asshole for giving up this kind of money for my son. It is generational wealth, and I'm making the decision based on emotion. I think they are assholes for thinking money is the only thing that matters. And I think you're an asshole for not thinking about your son. Like, it's not about you anymore, it's about what kind of a life you can provide your son. And I could take a whole load off of him. It could be the difference between him choosing to go to a state college and like an Ivy League, if he chooses to. You're taking away a lot from him in that. I get, but life insurance money only goes so far. I think I will tell my son's grandparents they can talk to him about it when he is 16. He will be old enough to understand the implications, but young enough to not be tied professionally to his last name. No. Change the last name. That's it. Give him the money. If later on in the future he chooses he wants to have your last name, he can change it back. But no. No. Change the name. Love of my life cheated on me for seven years. So today I left him with a little parting gift. Story time. I met the love of my life seven years ago and I very quickly realized that Steve was the one for me. I very quickly started envisioning our potential relationship together and what our life would look like. Throughout our relationship, Steve would often reach out to me to ask for money. And it was often because he was having car trouble or he couldn't pay a bill. And I would literally always help him. That is not the right color. I just saw it as us making an investment into our life together. In all, I probably gave him about 15 grand. And after four years of being together, Steve popped the question. So about six months into our marriage, Steve was telling me that he was having car trouble. Sorry, why am I unable to match my foundation? And he said that he needed about two grand for the repair this time. And this struck me as really odd. By this time, I knew his car as well as I knew my own. So one night when he was asleep, I went out to check what was up with his car or what he told me was up with his car. And lo and behold, what he said was wrong. There was no sign of it. And at this point, I started to spiral. So I have never done this before, but I went on Steve's phone. And I typed in £2,000 into his messenger to see what would come up. And straight away, up popped a text from him and his ex. And it turns out the ex, Amy, was also having car troubles and she'd reached out to him to ask for some money. So I started to go back and read messages and they went back for years. She would often ask Steve for money that he would just happily send her. And it worked out that these were the exact same amount he was asking me for. I had become a sugar mom for my boyfriend friend's ex-girlfriend. So over the next couple of weeks, I started the revenge. When Steve would go to sleep, I'd start texting Amy off his phone and I'd talk about plans to leave me, aka his wife. And I basically got it to the point where Amy was convinced that I was leaving and they were gonna get back together. And every time I went on his phone, I would be sure to delete the text messages so that Steve would have no idea. This whole process went on for months. I slowly watched their text feet up between the two of them until it looked like Steve was pretty much set on leaving me. We didn't have many assets together at the time because I was finishing my surgical residency. So I knew that the divorce would be kind of quick and painless to be fair. So the time came when I filed for divorce. I was very generous with our $10,000 worth of assets and we split it evenly. But I decided that I wanted a little bit more. Because you see, not only is it assets that are divided up equally during a marital severance, but debt is as well. A medical school is very expensive. And if you want to get precise, it's a quarter of a million expensive. So since I was the one to pay for your mistress for years, you can now pay for my medical school. Enjoy my parting gift, babe. Was I almost human trafficked or was I just being paranoid? I went to a concert in Detroit and met a young girl. She was 17, I am 20. I was standing alone by the wall and she walked up to me and started being really friendly. 
She was alone and claimed to not know the band and said she wasn't with the people she came with because they were annoying. She complimented me, called me pretty, asked how old I was. She asked if I wanted to hang out after the concert. She was trying to take pictures of me, said it was for Instagram. She had burn marks and cuts on her calves. It looked like someone put a cigarette out on her. She was talking about how she wanted to have sex with someone and pointed out some guys and called them money worthy. She said she was hungry and asked if I wanted to walk to McDonald's with her. I was just happy someone was talking to me, but my body was trembling and I knew I shouldn't go anywhere with her. After I rejected letting her take pictures of me or going anywhere with her, she left me and I didn't see her again all night. It was weird. Was she a recruiter or did I just miss out on making a new friend? What does money worthy mean? I secretly wish that my cousin wasn't related to me so I can date him. I'm currently 19 female, he is 22 male, and the most beautiful person on the planet, both inside and out. We first met when I was 16 and I had an instant crush on him. I didn't know about him, but when he turned 21 and our family went out to drink, he told me in secret that I was the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. Although I was so happy, I knew better than to do anything and then chalked it up to him being drunk. The next day, he sent me the text, drunk talks are sober thoughts, and that he didn't regret telling me that. Now, we have this weird thing where we meet up, talk, and pretend like we're a couple after we drive away far from our hometown and drive back home low-key disgusted with ourselves. Every family meeting is super awkward because we're paranoid our parents can sense what we're doing and we act super distant. They have no clue though. I wish I could just turn this off because I know it's wrong, but I can't. I sent an application for a college out of state, so maybe I can get out of this situation. I know this might gross people out, but I just needed to get this off my chest. Help for an old guy. I'm a widower who is approaching 80. My wife died about a year and a half ago. We were married for over 50 years and I miss her very much. I live in a large retirement community and I recently received a note from a woman who lives here who told me she is done with me. I barely know this woman. We have had dinner twice. Once I was assigned to a table where she was sitting, and once she asked me to have dinner with her. I accepted. I suspect now that was a mistake. I'm not ready for a new relationship, and frankly, I doubt I ever will be. I think about my late wife every day. Sometimes I think about her every hour. I do not believe I'm depressed. I can carry on with my daily life pretty well, actually. I keep busy. I have family in the area, and I see them often. I manage my own affairs, and I have other friends. I just do not want to deal with a female companion. I've been thinking of answering her note as politely as possible, explaining my situation, but I do not want to give her any hint that I'm trying to start a relationship. I just want to say I'm sorry if I offended her, but I meant no harm. It is just that I intend to go through life single from now on. Should I do this or should I just ignore the letter and hope she goes away?